All right, in this final lesson of this module, we're going to unpack a doozy here, okay? The way of Jesus is never illegal, is what I'm calling it. In Galatians 5, one of the most powerful passages in the Bible, in my opinion, Paul reminds all people that their calling in Christ is one of freedom. Within this freedom, followers of Jesus will choose to freely serve others rather than freely serve themselves. In verse 14, Paul gets everyone's attention with one sentence. Jesus had told us all along everything boils down to two commands. Love God, love others. Paul merges them into one command, culminating all of Jesus' teachings on love to their practical conclusion. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. The way we treat others is how we show our love to God. And just like that, everything in the law is condensed into one phrase. The five books of the Torah are summarized in five words. Love your neighbor as yourself. But even with this new concise perspective on the law, Paul reminds us in verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. It is actually not a matter of following rules anymore, but it's about understanding the ways of love. There's a selfish character that runs counter to love, and there's a sacrificial, service-oriented character that expresses love. Paul calls the selfish character the flesh and lists some of its expressions. He includes acts like sexual immorality, hatred, jealousy, selfish ambition, dissension, and drunkenness. He says these run contrary to the spirit. Everything on the list has a common tendency of victimizing others and using them for selfish wants. It takes us back to transactional living where humans become channels of commerce and their worth can be categorized and compared one against another. It dehumanizes creatures made in the image of God. Now remember, as I have written and taught about before, this tragic outcome is prompted by religion's focus on deficiency more than deity. What is wrong with us? So what we attempt to do in our human nature is fix this problem ourselves. This is where our true answer to the most important and fundamental question of who is Jesus gets exposed. To repair our brokenness, we tend to take the foundation of love that Christ has given us and add some laws to it. We like rules. We like steps, procedures, and how-to guides. And we bring that approach into our character development. Unfortunately, the conclusion we reach is that the love of God is good, but it's not enough. We feel like we still need to be told what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. And in turn, we think we need to tell other people what they should and should not do. We still need law. We still want rules. And so different groups of Christians make different lists of do's and don'ts. And in the end, we desire to still combine love and law, which is no gospel at all. See, if love is not enough, then God is not enough. If God is not enough, then Jesus is not enough. If Jesus is not enough, then humans must determine what to add to Jesus to make him sufficient. That's the formula for idolatry. We make a Jesus and version of God who is different from the real God. We present a false gospel, which is no gospel at all. Here's, here's the point. Jesus is enough. Love is enough. If we follow the way of love, then we focus on the right things. We have come full circle to see how it all ties together. How we answer the question, who is Jesus, shades everything else. Everything. And when we answer that question to imply in any way that he is not enough, then we, made in his image, can't help but believe we are not enough. All of the things on Paul's list of the flesh, contrary to the Spirit, are aimed at trying to make ourselves enough on our terms. They are about using someone else or labeling myself better in comparison to someone else. They are all acts of idolatry because they all start with a false premise. God's love is not enough. With perfect love, all of these things become unnecessary. So God's word, yes, God's word, both written in scripture and declared by Jesus through his life and ministry over and over, shows us a healthy alternative. The Apostle Paul describes it as walking by the Spirit. The Spirit, of course, is the Spirit of Christ. So Paul gives us the answer to our main question. Who is Jesus to you? It is shown in the fruit that he produces in us. 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are the fruits of the Spirit. They are the outpouring of Jesus. Jesus is love. Jesus is joy. Jesus is peace and patience and kindness and goodness. Jesus is faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And here's the kicker. No one anywhere has anything against this Jesus unless they are truly crazy or evil. Everyone craves this Jesus. You will not enter a town that has a city ordinance against citizens being too gentle. You will not find international law prohibiting peaceful interaction between countries. You won't enter a school that has a slogan, don't be good. And there is no HR manual for any business that outlines how joy and faithfulness are going to get you in trouble. The Bible says against such things, there is no law. Sure, Paul was likely talking about religious law and making the point that there is nothing even in the Old Testament construct that outlawed such things, but common sense tells us it goes beyond that. Human reason and natural law do not conspire against Jesus. Everything cries out for an embrace from this kind of God. The irony of religious political groups trying to get laws on the books to put God into our schools, courts, and social institutions is that the way of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, is never illegal. Don't gloss over this point, this teaching. Isn't it ironic that professing Christians are so unwelcome because of the way they have treated so many people when the blueprint that Jesus laid out for us and supplies us with by his own Spirit is so attractive and inviting and caring and compassionate? Regardless of politics, religion, nationality, age, gender, or status, everyone needs, outside of true mental impairment, everyone wants the fruit of the Spirit. I can say that I have encountered people on multiple occasions who have not wanted to hear me talk about Jesus, but I have never encountered anyone outside of incidents of true mental health crisis who have ever resisted me acting like Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit draws the world to God. It is our witness. It is our power. It is our proof.